Hollywood, TV, mainstream media in general, shape society far more than churches, far more than the government, far more than political figures usually do anyway. It's had a firm control of society since people became glued to it. The internet has changed that, and legacy media has been trying to regain the control that they lost ever since. And they're becoming worse and worse as time goes on. They're willing to do anything to get that control back. One thing that I have to give Trump credit for is that he was good at breaking media's lock on such a large segment of society. Granted, for many of his fans, instead of blindly trusting media, you know, and especially Fox News, they now put all of their trust, they put total blind trust into one person, which makes their blind trust look that much more ridiculous. It would be nice if more people on the left really, really analyze that blind trust element and maybe learn something from it so, you know, the left wouldn't put blind trust into media as much as they tend to. I shouldn't really say the left, though. I should say, you know, the neoliberal boomers, you know. They're the ones that put the most blind trust into mainstream media. Having said that, there are definitely a select set of Trump supporters who put blind faith into other types of media, put faith into sources that constantly put out ridiculous, unprovable conspiracy theories and push homeopathy and other such crap on the side. They just put all their faith into it. Well, you know, we can't put our faith in mainstream media, so let's put it into something else. It's just like, no, the point was to not put faith into all this stuff. Do your own research. Look into things yourself. Don't just believe something because they said it in a convincing tone. I mean, look at this shit. People actually believe this shit. Oh, Trump is going to run the country in November. And then November will come. Oh, he'll, he'll run the country in December. Oh, oh, it's January. No, no, just, just stop believing in this shit. You're, 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 you're not showing your intelligence, I tell you that. You're not a real free thinker if you constantly believe in this stuff. You're certainly not a critical thinker. I mean, it's as silly as the people who think that believing in the children's story of Noah's Ark makes them more enlightened or something. But, you know, overall, trust in media is at an all-time low. Fewer people are blindly trusting whatever media tells them. More people are asking questions than ever. You know, it's a good thing that more people are trying to get their own perspectives, since it's very unlikely that any sort of significant regulations will ever be enforced on our media, except for, you know, demographical equalization, right? You know, anything that's easier and can make you virtue signal more, that's what will happen first. Having said that, this is not the best time for people to be questioning as much as they are. You know, it couldn't be at a worse time. We have a pandemic, and tons of people aren't listening to media and aren't listening to the government at a time when they're actually trying to do something good for the public, you know? Yeah, not the best timing. But it is good for society to... It's a good trend for society to be questioning things more. You know, and we shouldn't forget that. I find it interesting that over the past five or so years, late-night talk shows have... The skits and, and monologues are primarily consisting of left-leaning political viewpoints. You know, up until, I don't know, mid this year, I, you know, a lot of them were still revolving around Trump. I mean, yeah, there's a lot to dislike about Trump, but honestly, I, I, it gets old after even six or seven months. What happened to actual comedy? I mean, sure, political comedy can be very funny at times, but it's not the only humor. And if it's from the same person, with the same type of humor, the same type of perspective being shown, day after day with the same overall message, yeah, it gets boring. I mean, somehow Jon Stewart was able to, I mean, he's got this new show on, on Apple TV or whatever it's called, Apple Plus. Um, maybe I'll look into it. I, I've looked at uh, the little clips of it and it looks good, but... Uh, yeah, John Stewart seems to be able to keep things fresh. I mean, maybe that's really the issue. It's just people are running out of ideas and they're not, uh, 
They're just not able to. I mean, John Stewart obviously has a a political viewpoint, and and it doesn't get boring. But I don't know. To me, late night talk show hosts are at their best when you can't really tell what side they're on. You know, Johnny Carson will always be the king of late night talk shows. When it comes to someone being more neutral, I mean, people like to mention Jay Leno, but he always struck me as very rightward leaning. And he's never been funny to me. It's like he relies on his delivery, his mannerisms, and his accent to make something lame seem funny. It was why he was perfect for Doritos commercials. I do like Jay Leno's garage, but he's not trying to be funny there. He's just showing things that he likes. You know, I think he's a great person, but I just don't think his humor is, his comedy is any good, you know? And a lot of blatantly right-wing comedians like Steven Crowder, yeah, they're not funny at all either, really. A lot of it is just this, ha ha, I probably triggered some snowflakes, I'm just laughing thinking about triggering them, ha 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 ha. Where the joke itself isn't funny, it's, it's just imagining how other people might react to it, right? I mean... A broken analog clock is right twice a day, so sometimes he says something that's funny, but he generally enjoys degrading people he thinks he's superior to, as well as, you know, that constant stupid frat boy humor. I think Gavin McGinnis is loads funnier than Steven Crowder for that type of humor, but, I mean, I still don't like him either, but, I mean, at least he's sometimes kind of funny. David Letterman was really decent. He occasionally showed his political leanings, but it wasn't his main focus. And sometimes he was genuinely funny. But I'm very curious as to what legacy media is going to try to do next to try to regain some of that power that they had before. And how many people will bend over backwards to kiss their asses in the process. But yep, media has definitely lost a big percentage of people on the right. They've lost a number of independents. And yes, they've lost some people on the left as well. As I said, though, they're not losing the neoliberals, especially not the boomer neoliberals. They're on that shit like flies. Have a joy, joy day!